Hello, I'm Svetlin Naku from SoftUni, the software university. I'm here for the third part of my free Java coding tutorial, a series of video lessons with hands-on practical coding exercises. As you know, my code lessons are more than just video tutorials. They combine videos with live examples and practical hands-on exercises where you write Java code after each lesson. Because I believe that coding can be learned only by coding. Learn by doing. Today, I continue with the third part of my free Java coding tutorial for absolute beginners. If you missed the previous lessons, please review them first to catch up. In this lesson, I will talk about the console-based input and output in Java. I will show you how to read user input, format and print output to the console, and how to read and print text and numbers. I will teach you how to use the Java util scanner class to read text and numbers, and how to work with integers and decimal numbers. Do you remember that coding is a skill? and it should be practiced just like any other skill. Don't skip the coding exercises at the end of this lesson. During the lesson, I will show you how to solve several coding problems and how to submit your solutions in the judge system for automated grading. We shall read some data, perform some simple calculations with it and print the results. These are the exercises. Let's do it. Let's learn how to read and print data using Java. Are you ready? Let's first explain the concept of the console and how to read and print text-based data in Java using the Java Util Scanner class. I will show you also how to use system out printf with placeholders to print formatted text to the console. Let's explain first what is the console, the so-called terminal, or the standard input and output uh, interface for the console-based programs. It's a special window uh, used to communicate with the user. We can consider that this is a place where the user can write something and send this data to the program. The program processes this data and print some output which is also a text-based uh, information. So the console uses a text-based input and un output. Uh, it's a text-based interface or it's, it's called command line interface because we can send comments through this uh, input and output text data. So this is how it could look like. This is typically a uh, black window where you write some data and this data is sent to the uh, program behind and the program can print something as output. So this is another example how the console can look like. Uh, this is an IntelliJ idea. So the green text here is what the user enters and the black text here is what the program prints as output. And this is another example in the Windows PowerShell terminal where the developer can write some comments and the PowerShell executes these comments and prints the output from their execution. Uh, so generally the console displays text data, which is lines of text. And it reads the user input, uh, which is also lines of text. So it can read data from the user and it can print data for the user as output. And generally it works as a common twine interface, interface based on comments. You ask something, the program answers. You ask something else, the program answers again. Let's see how this works in Java, how we can read input and print strings in Java. First one concept, everything we read from the console comes as a string. It comes as a text data. So generally, if we want to use the user input, we use this scanner.nextline, which reads one text line of data from the console. But first we need the scanner class. We need to create a scanner object of the scanner class, 
which is created from the scanner class using the system.in. System.in is the system input, the, the input part of this console. System.out is the system output where we print data. From system in we read data, from system out we print data. But system.in is only able to read single characters from the console. So we want to read uh, uh, whole lines. That's why we need to use the scanner class. I'll show you in, in a moment uh, when I uh, start in IntelliJ ID and I'm using Java code to, to show you this in more detail. So as a concept, everything we print to the console is converted to string first, which means that you can freely print with systemout.println to the system out, the system output to the console, any text, for example, hello world or hello or how are you. But if we want to print numbers, they are first uh, converted to strings. In this example, we convert the hello plus one to three into the string uh hello one two three and then this string is later printed let's see this in action i start intellij idea community editions which i have installed previously and i'll create a new project for our today lesson i click new project and okay i click new project with Java, I use Java 17, common to one project, and I need to give it a name. Always give meaningful names to your projects. Your project's name should answer the question, what's inside? So what's inside here? We'll have Java, console, examples, don't use spaces. It's bad practice because you, you may get in trouble if you use... Uh, spaces in the name. So Java console examples is a good name for what we shall do today. We shall play with some examples with the Java console. I create this new project uh, and it will have one main class here. I have a project with a single Java class called main. The name is not important right now, so I will uh, leave it as it. So, to use the scanner, I need first to say scanner and some name, scanner equals to new scanner. If I press enter now, this scanner class will be imported and will be auto-completed uh, here, the name. The, this is a feature of IntelliJ IDEA. Because scanner is external class, I need to import it. It comes from the Java util scanner from external library. So I continue here, system.in, but to use the scanner class, you need to import it. If you use some high quality and good uh, development environment, this will be done for you. Okay, now we have the scanner and we want to read a new line. So we will say string line equals to scanner dot next line okay so string is with big uh, with capital letter because this is how java works and once we have written this one we can print it uh, as out was the out template for shorting this and i'll print something like i read this line from the console and at the second line I'll print the line and I run this program right click run main and it will run the console now the project is building because it's Java it's it's not quite fast at the first run but now I can enter something Hello, I'm Svetlin from SoftUni, for example, and it will read this line and it prints the, the, this reads 
the text and save it, saves it into this variable called wine. So I read this wine from the console, comes from this, and from this it prints what was read. So generally I read through scanner and next line. This is the way we read data. And how we print data? With system out print when and also with system out print. I'll show you. System dot out dot print five. This will print the number five. It will be first transferred, converted to text, then will it will be printed. And I will uh, print uh, a space and sorry uh, I will print five uh, bottles of water for example and now I will delete this code because I want to demonstrate you how print works this will print five plus space plus bottles of water and ln means please go to the next line so if we have print ln it will go to the next line just after printing if i skip ln i'll get everything on the same line do you see what happens? Okay, I have more spaces than required, but this is how it works. So it's usually we use print when and print when. Okay, this is how we read data with scanner and uh, string one equals to scanner dot next line. Sorry, next line, enter. This is how we read data and this is how we print data. Let's go ahead. How do we format output? What does it mean? It means that sometimes we need to print some data in certain format. For example, I need to print the first name of the person and his email in brackets. And this is called format. This is another example how we can format text and data using the so-called placeholders. Placeholders are places in the text which are replaced by certain data. For example, we have string first name equals John and int h equals 19. So we can print this uh, by template, by a placeholder. We want to print something is something years old and this something to be replaced with the first name and this something to be replaced with the age. And Person S means string data. Person T means text data. So usually we use person S when we have a text data, just like this, and person D when we have a integer data, uh, just like this H. So when we run this code, we'll see this output. I'll show you uh, something like like this. So we have string name equals to Svetlin, for example, and int h equals to 25, for example, and I print, but with not ln, with f, I print Svetlin, uh, not Svetlin, percent s is uh, percent t years old, and that's all okay so we need to supply an argument for this person s and it will be the name and for this person t we supply the h and now we run this and it will produce the following result we can use this twice person test person test name and name and it will print swetlin twice like this and we can have a better example and the next year he will 
b and here i can have h plus one uh, percent d years old so i can have this here and this at the at the, the other line but generally the idea here is that i have someone the name is h is person d h years old and the next year he will be person d h plus one years old so let's see the what how this works the next year he will be 26 years old so this is how this uh, formatted output works and it doesn't go to the next line unlike uh, println so if we print several printf commands they will be uh, joined at the single line if we want to uh, change this we just print person uh, slash n slash n means go to the new line it's a special character with with which goes to the next line okay so let's go a little bit ahead i already explained the person test it's called a placeholder and this is person d is a placeholder for integer this is for text this is for integers so let's see another example when we have some uh some numbers for example let's say uh double a equals 1.5 and double b equals uh, 3.33 for example so i can print with person f uh, the sum is and i'll print now percent f which means floating point and i say a plus b a plus b is the sum and it will be replaced this placeholder will be replaced by this sum so see what happens now the sum is 4.80 uh, uh, 83 i'll use this and i'll remove this code because i don't need it so see how does it, this works and it always formats the output with six uh with six uh, numbers after the uh, floating point after the decimal num the decimal separator so i want to change this so i can press percent dot two please use two uh digits after the decimal separator so it will pre print for 0.83 do you see now okay and if i press percent one f this will first round the numbers and then it will uh, print it so if i have uh, this for example four point 87 if i print it with one digit after the decimal point it will output 4.9 because it will be rounded this is how this works so percent f is a placeholder for a floating point number and in this example the output will be 11.58 and percent 2f means two digits after the decimal point we can have even 20 and it will work like this if we have more digits after the floating point uh, after decimal separator so let's go ahead how do we read user input in java so we want to i want to give you an example how to write a program which reads a name from the console and prints a greeting, prints something like hello and the name. For example, I enter my name Svetlin Nakov and it prints hello Svetlin Nakov. So first I will create a scanner, uh, then I will read the next line from the scanner, the next line from the in, uh, input, and then I will print hello and this name. 
So let's do this. I will write something like scanner scanner equals to new control space and does the auto complete. So I write this code very fast because I have this auto complete. And now I can say string name equals to scanner dot next line. It's already there in the suggestions from the IntelliJ idea. And now I want to print something like hello space comma plus the name. And I run this code and it will enter the first the text. Okay, just a moment. It needs some time. Wow, to build this program. Java is sometimes slow. Uh, so I'm Svetlin Naku and it says hello Svetlin Naku. I can even uh, print something like uh, what is your name with space and without ln print ln without print ln and see what will happen if the program will say what is your name and i will tell it's Svetlin. see the green is what i sent to the program the uh, black is what the program prints to me and it says hello Svetlin, and it may add an exclamation mark so if i write for example peter hello peter okay so let's go ahead this is how the execution result may look like so this is how we generally read text data from the console and how do we print uh, data at the console which is also text-based this is the input and this is the output as i already explained in this section, we will read and print numbers to the console. Numbers can be integers such as 5 and 20 or floating point or real numbers such as 2.5 and minus 3.14. We shall use the scanner.next in and scanner.next double. Let's see them in action. Now let's explain how do we read integer numbers from the console using Java. It's pretty simple. You, we use the same scanner object, but instead of next one, we print, we use the next in command. The next in says, please read the next uh, portion of text and parse it to the integer, to an integer number. So int int equals scanner.nextin, next in reads uh, an integer number and this is an example how we can read a square area uh, uh, an input number a and calculate the square area by, by this given side a for example we read uh, 5 and we multiply 5 by 5 and we print the area let's see this in action in IntelliJ idea so i can again write scanner equals control space scanner equals to control space new control space scanner system control space dot in and this is how to just enter this faster scanner scanner equals to scanner uh, new scanner of system dot in and then we read the number and a equals to scanner dot next int Okay, and but not as a, and we can say uh, int area equals to a multiplied by a, and now print uh, as out system out print when area equals to was area, and now we print. Uh, we run the program, we enter for example 5 and it says the area is 25. We enter for example uh, 30 and it says 900. But if we enter something which is not text, uh, for example, which is not a number, 
will have an exception and later I will explain you in the exception handling lesson how we can catch this exception with this try and um, catch exception something like this exception x and print something like wow like uh, error but I'll talk about this later so now if I print uh, 5 it works correctly if I print 3.5 which is not an integer number it's a floating point number uh, oh sorry it should be everything should be inside okay so if I print now 3.5, it will say error. But this will be in some of the next lessons. I just mentioned this. Uh, so let's explain how we can read floating point numbers. We use next double instead of next integer. So if we use double here and next double and here again double because when we multiply two double numbers the result, the result is double as well we can print the area and for example if now if we have uh, 3.5 the area is 12.25 uh, okay and we can even print something like uh, enter side the uh, square side a equals two and like this so the user should be aware of what is expected for him to enter 6.5 for example and this is the area this is how this works uh, and this is another example how we can convert from inches to centimeters we uh, take a number which is inches and we multiply by 2.54 and we print the centimeters so we can save something like scanner uh, scanner equals to new scanner of system dot system dot in uh, and uh, double inches equals or uh, no no the centimeters centimeters equals to scanner dot next next double and double inches equals to centimeters multiplied by 2.54 and we uh, print the uh, inches equal plus inches so this is how it could work for example Two, centi two centimeters are 5.0 inches oh it should be incorrect because I need to if I have the yeah one inch is 2.54 centimeters if I convert from centimeter to inches I should divide and now two centimeters should be 0 0.78 I interchange the inches in centimeters so if we have inches here and centimeters here it should be multiplication and I can print something like print F and say percent F uh, inches is equal to percent f centimeters inches and centimeters and new line here let's see what happens so two inches is five point uh, zero eight uh, dot 2f dot 2f to have two 
decimal uh, digits after the decimal point. So this is how it works. Right. Okay, let's go ahead. How we can concatenate text and numbers. So if we have first name and last name and age, we can concatenate this with plus. Just like this. I can say the first name plus last name plus vertical uh, line plus age. So this is called concatenation or uh, joining operation. So the result will be something like this. Let, let's see this in action. So if we can string uh, first name equals to Scatlin and string last name equals to Markov and in h equals to 25 for example i can say string uh, text equals to first first name plus space plus last name plus space vertical line uh, plus h for example and i print this text. So the result is something like this. I have between Makov vertical line 25. So this is the example and we can do it like this. Uh, a plus B equals A plus B. This is quite interesting because if I have int n this A is 5, int B 7 and if I print something like uh, a plus b uh, equals plus a plus b and it will print 57. Why? Because the plus operator works like this, takes this, appends this and it's a plus b equals 5. Then appends b 7 and it will be 57. If you want to avoid this, you can use brackets to change the order of calculations and it will be 12, like it's expected to be. So be careful. Now it's time to move on to the hands-on exercises because we want to learn skills, not just talk or watch video lessons. Fold exercises, solve the practical problems from this lesson, and send your solutions to the judge system for grading. Learn by doing. Write code, run the code, test the code, make mistakes, fix them, make more mistakes, fix them again, run and test again, run again, test again, fix until the code works correctly. Finally, submit your code in the judge. This is how you learn coding by practice. You will find the problem descriptions and the link to the judge system at softuni.org. Let's do it. Let's code. Let's solve a few practical problems. Maybe I repeat myself, but it's really important that if you want to learn coding, that you need to write code. Learn by doing. Watching video gives you only the knowledge and solving the hands-on exercises which I have prepared for you gives you the experience and the practical skills. Exercises, projects, coding, fixing bugs, making mistakes, fixing them, running testing, this is how you gain experience and practical skills. So, write and submit the coding exercises. Done. The first problem we are going to solve today is to, com to make a program which converts dates to minutes. So we read a single integer, the dates to be uh, converted, and we convert the days to minutes. So one day have 24 hours and each hours have 60 minutes. So if we multiply the number of days by 24 and uh, multiplied by 60, we'll find how many minutes one day uh, or five days or whatever days uh, contains. Finally, we print the minutes, and this is what we should write. We should, if we have two as input, the output should be minutes, space, equals 2808. This is another example, five, min, uh, five days are 7200 minutes. Let's solve this. 
How do we solve it? We create a new project in IntelliJ IDEA, we give a, a good name or I'll sh I shall reuse the, the, the project and I read the, the days multiply by 24 by 60 to calculate the number of hours and number of minutes and I finally print the minutes. Let's do it. I already have uh, a project called Java Console Examples. So I'll, I'll create here a new class, new Java class, which will be called uh, days to minutes. The name should ask, answer the question watch inside. Inside is something which converts days to minutes or days to minutes converter because this is a converter from days to minutes. It's very, very well done. So I click, uh, use the main template and in the main template, I write something like scanner scan equals to new scanner of system dot in. The scanner was automatically imported here and the name of the variable variable can be scan or s or scanner i'll use scan so uh, i'll uh, read the number of days in days equals to scan dot next int and i'll calculate the number of minutes in minutes equals to days multiplied by 24 hours multiplied by 60 minutes so int this was a mistake and finally i print the mm, the minutes and i should print also something a text which says minutes equal to this so let's test this uh, five days should have oh it runs not the correct program. Did you see if I press this, this runs main, but main was my, my previous program. So I need to click run days to minutes converter. So five days are 7,200 minutes. I think I'm ready. So I copy this and I'll try to submit it to the judge system, but this is how it works. I already demonstrated. The judge for this lesson is here. If we go at contest code lessons, uh, Java tutorial part three uh, practice, and I can put this and check whether it is correct. It needs some time to uh, convert and it works correct. If I submit a wrong uh, solution like uh, use 61, and the minutes per hour it will say that it's this solution is not correct see it doesn't work correctly it's partially correct maybe when the days are uh, zero it works correctly only in this case okay let's go ahead with the next problem i already explained how to submit in the judge to convert centimeters to inches so we read a floating point number, centimeters, for example, 3.5. We convert the centimeters to inches by dividing by 2.54 and print the calculated result in this format. 5.00 centimeters equals to 1.97 inches. Let's do it. So I'll create a new uh, Java class, which will be uh, called, what's the name, centimeters to inches centimeters to inches not program two not program file five some pe some people use new folder brackets two it's bad if you see this run away this is person who is not going to be a good developer uh, so always use good names that's my uh, important point here so I need to re read a floating point number called centimeters. I can uh, just take this with control C and control V. Uh, so it will be double centimeters dot next double. 
so I read, read the centimeters and I make the calculation double inches equals to centimeters divided by 2.54 because one inch is uh, one centimeter is 2.54 inches this is the formula so finally I print something like this 5.00 centimeters equals two inches I can do it like this let's let's try it so I print cm plus uh, centimeters equals two uh, plus inches plus inches so let's run this and let's check five should be 1.97 five uh, I need to run this program, not the previous one. 5 equals to this one. But looks like I don't have space here. And also looks like that I don't use exactly two uh, digits after the decimal point here. So I need to change something because this will not run correctly. So if we go at the, in the in the judge system, le, let's go and open the centimeters to inches problem. If I submit this, uh, it will not work correct because if I click details, it will send me that the expected output is like this and my output is not as expected and I need to print CM not centimeters here I should print cm and also I should use two uh, digits after a decimal point so I need to use print f with something like percent dot to f centimeters equals to percent dot to f inches and cm and inches this cm will go here and this inches will go here let's run the code and check whether it works as expected five centimeters equals to 1.97 i have another example 2.7 let's test it 2.7 it should be 2.7 equals 1.06 oh looks like it's correct so i copy the code I go to the judge system and I submit it again for this problem submit with the Java code and it says it says that it's everything is correct so we are done with this problem this is how we can uh, run the code and the next problem is calculation of the speed we read 2.2 floating point numbers distance and time and we need to calculate the speed so if we have uh, this is an example uh, if we have uh, passed 15 kilometers for two hours our speed is 7.50 uh, kilometers per hour the metrics like kilometers hours seconds are not important here because we just need to divide the first number to the second that's the entire problem uh, i will not solve it it's for you we need but you can use this as guidance you read the distance read the time divide them and print uh, in the correct format the calculated speed i will it's for you it's for homework so if we press 50 and 10 the output should be 5.00 the next uh, problem is calculating an uh, area of triangle. Uh, so we read the uh, side A and the height of side A. So let's have a drawing if we have a triangle and we have this H. And if we have this A, this is the size and this is the uh, height. Uh, if we multiply them by the well-known formula multiply them and divide by two we'll calculate the area of triangle and we need to print 
the second digit. So we need to multiply the first number 5 by, by 10 and divide to 2. So this is a triangle area calculator. It's very similar to the previous one. We read two numbers, we make a calculation and we print the output. It's again for you. I leave it for a homework. So this is how it works. And this is another problem. It's about calculating circle area and perimeter. We enter one uh, number, uh, floating point number, the radius of the circle. And we calculate the area and the perimeter of the circle. Maybe you know the formulas. If you don't know the formulas, please use circle uh, perimeter area formulas. Uh, formulas. But generally, it's 2 times PR. This is the... Uh, one of the formulas, but p the perimeter is two times the number p 3.14 multiplied by the radius, and the area is p multiplied by the radius multiplied by the radius. So this is um, the, your last problem. I will leave it for you. It is a little bit more complex. Please solve it and uh, send it to the judge here. And if you open the results, you should see that you have 500 uh, points from all the problems solved correct. Okay, again, solve your problems because coding is experience. Coding is a skill. It's not watching videos. Did you like this lesson? Do you want more? Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free video tutorials on coding and software development. Join the learners community at softuni.org. Get free access to the practical exercises and the automated chat system for this code lesson. Get free help from mentors and meet other learners. Join now! softuni.org